So here I am in the Bots HQ. This is the nerve center of Big Brother, and we have just had word that Raph and Joe's feud has taken a bit of an unexpected turn. Not only that, Chanel has been getting hot and sweaty with a hunky new house guest. Do you want to find out more? Go on then. It's time for Big Brother's bit on the side. Roll the titles. <laughs> what a dear. So, well, blue and green, to be fair. Ellie and Sam, bless them, they paid tribute to that famous celebrity couple, Smurfette and the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. They'd have lovely little turquoise babies. <laughs> um, speaking, though, of unlikely parents, how about the new dynamic duo of Andrew and Raph? Yes! I mean, yes! Joe, in all fairness, despite doing his best Michael Caine impression, didn't know what to hit him, but maybe he needs to be a bit more like Chanel. I don't give a fuck, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Do I care? No, too glam to give a damn. There you go. Uh, oh, <laughs> that took me a whole three minute. Uh, also, going up, we've got our hands on some highly classified audition footage Ooh. from our house. Oh. It is the cringiest thing you'll see all week. Let me be honest. <laughs> uh, but now, in the spirit of Smurf Village, let's get this party started. So, just ask all of the greatest pop acts of the noughties, and they'll tell you she was their favourite talent show judge. Nowadays, you're more likely to find her escaping to the country, slash L Street and Borumwood. She didn't pick me for S Club Juniors. It's Nikki Chapman! <laughs> could give Rafa a run for his money in the Big Brother Superfan stakes. We could not get through a series of bots without this hunk of a specimen. Yeah. It's Philip yeah. Olivio! Yeah. And my final guest needs no introduction, which is a proper Brucey bonus, because we've run out of introductions. <laughs> give it up, it's Tuesdays, it's Trisha! Yeah. It's 1995 all over again. Look at this panel. Oh, nostalgia then. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's start with one of tonight's key players, us. Uh, to be fair, Hannah, Isabel and Chanel enjoyed mostly positive comments from the box panel and audience last night in the shopping task. Joe, not so much. Um, Trish, in typical Joe fashion, he said he couldn't give a... You know where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm, Do mm -hmm. you believe him? Well, he said that about 200 times, so no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, was, he was clearly hurt. I thought what was interesting was at the end of that bit, he, he clapped like this, and then afterwards he spent the rest of the evening talking about how he couldn't give up. Do you think that played a bit of a part, sort of this lot, and obviously the panel last night, in his emotions last oh, night? Absolutely. Because we did see Joe yeah, sort of have yeah. a bit of a turn last yeah, night. Yeah, absolutely. It's your fault. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you! Um, all in all, though, it weren't really a great night for him. Uh, Andrew laid into him for being um, abrupt, I think his words were. Um, Philip, what were you making of Andrew standing up to Joe like that? I, I liked it in a way and it didn't in a way, you know. A bit I'm, of both. Yeah, a bit of both. I, like, I'm a fan of Raph, really. You're a Raph fan. I, I like the way Raph, uh, he kind of understands everyone, but um, Andrew's kind of Raph with balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Just to confirm. Raph may or may not have balls. We don't know. We've, we've not seen them. Um, that Joe and Raph situation feud, it, I mean, it has been brewing all series, but Joe seems a bit more rattled than he has done in previous weeks. Um, Nick, Nicky Chapman's here, by the way. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is lovely. Yeah. This is lovely. Yeah. Um, 
have you forgiven me? I haven't forgiven you for not putting me in S Club Juniors, but seeing as you, <laughs> seeing as somehow you don't look a day older than you did back 30 years ago, then no, you look Thank lovely. You. I'll forgive you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. It hasn't harmed you at all. I've <laughs> been all right. Um, <laughs> how much do you think Andrew's arrival was give Raph a bit of confidence? Do you think a lot, a you lot, reckon? because it's two against one in a way, and you can see that Joe really didn't know how to deal with it. He tried to walk away, and then he came back. He was completely rattled, and he always says, "I don't care. I don't care." Yeah. He cares so much. And Andrew, when he first went into the house, he hardly said a word, did yeah. he? He was so meek. And then suddenly the worm has turned and he's found his feet. And the rest of the housemates were all around him, a circle, you know, witnessing this spectacle. Yeah. Very interesting. Sorry, can I just say what I love? The worm has turned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she comes from her own catchphrases as well. <laughs> I do have one question. You can ask whatever you want. Andrew, the glasses. Yeah. He used to be a welder. No one's mentioned I these glasses. No one's mentioned the pilot glasses on well, top. I know yeah. Tom got into trouble for wearing his, but he wears these welder glasses. Babe, on election night, I tried to prise them off his head and he slapped me. You got oh. to No, he didn't really. I'm lying. <laughs> He's had them on literally uh, uh, since uh, launch has night. He? Yeah, loves a pair of glasses. <laughs> he loves it. Um, another one of my favourite moments from the series tonight. I don't know if you spotted this, but when Andrew and Raph were discussing Joe when they were in Thorn Cottage, have a look at this. Just a casual sanitary towel on the floor. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Trisha, you've seen some sights in your life. I've seen some sights in my life. Well, I mean, Sue. Sue was... Do you remember when Sue first went into the house? She was complaining about how dirty they yeah. were. And I also... Th there's a part where... <laughs> Sorry, I... I've just got a shot of you. Go back to that, Trisha had a sanitary towel. <laughs> 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 only on Channel 5. Yes, only on Channel 5. No, no, no. It's like doing my show again. <laughs> um, no, but Sue pointed that out a long time ago, and I think it's really funny when Ellie had all the paint on and she, she said to Chanel, I'm not even allowed to take a shower. Chanel said something along the line of, you know, of and. It took you down <laughs> to the ground, I think she said. <laughs> well, listen, let's get back to Joe. Um, he's reminded us and the housemates enough times that he is 56 years old. <laughs> But he is there squabbling with boys in their early 20s, like a 20-year-old would. Philip, why do you think he lets them get under his skin so much? Because when Raph said that comment tonight, I mean, I know a lot of people in here are a bit divided about yeah. how he said it and what he meant by it, but he really let it affect him. Uh, to, to be honest, even though I like Raph, Raph, he, he knew what he was doing when he said that comment, and it really did affect Joe. But anything in that house, we all know after a few weeks, anything, it's under a microscope, so... Yeah, will a sanitary towel, anybody. don't worry, no one. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my main concern, you know? Come on! Give them the over. 45 minutes, that's all they need. Uh, well, listen, in the last couple of weeks, we did actually see newbie Isabel take Loton down. Um, <laughs> Nikki... Oh. Uh, Nikki, do you think... Obviously, our second chances. We know Andrew and Sue for definite, and Simone. They've really, really been studying the show whilst they've been out. Do you think Andrew's gone in there thinking, I'm going to be the one to take Joe down? Yeah. Could be. I mean, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm, it? yeah. <laughs> Made you think now, didn't I, girl? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do have the upper hand, and how many times does everyone keep reminding us, especially Hurricane Sue, it's a game, it's a game. Yes. But it is a game at the end of the day, and I think a lot of the reactions are for the cameras, but he's gone in, hasn't he, with ammunition, and that's power. Yeah, you knowledge know. is power. Absolutely. <laughs> knowledge Absolutely. is power. Um, speaking of Isabel, actually, tonight uh, she said to Chanel, in this house, no one actually knows what the arguments are actually about. <laughs> Trisha. She's got a bit of a point, and she's she? got a she's got a great point because there's nothing else to do but look at each other and talk about each other and be in each other's space. So the little things become absolutely massive. They do become big in there, don't they? I think Sukvinder always said it was a melting pot, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, we're really yeah. seeing it more and more so now. Um, let's get back to the task. Uh, Hannah, don't make me laugh. Freaked out at the sight of Ellie and Sam covered in body paint. <laughs> Everyone was a bit confused, <laughs> well, uh, but then Deborah did explain she had a genuine fear of clowns. So Philip, living in a house with that lot, must be killing her because they're full of clowns. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Lol. Lol. I can't work here. Oh, uh, Hannah. Uh, Deborah, uh, 
I don't mind so much, but Hannah kind of grates on me a little bit. Philip, the fear, yeah. the fear on that girl's face. But it, it wasn't the fear at first. It, it, it kind of grew and she's progressed, didn't it? She's a bit so, of drama exactly. queen. Exactly. So it was she? exaggerated. Once you knew that people were going, "Oh, are you okay?" It was like, yeah. "Oh, I'm really yeah, scared more, now." More, more. It was like, "Be hey. What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, well, that brings us nicely onto Ellie and Sam and the ghost of Loton has returned uh, to haunt Ellie. She accepted that her and Loton will only ever be friends. Nikki, what do you think the problem is with her and Sam then at the moment? Well, it's really interesting where Ellie always sort of keeps herself with the boys, doesn't she? Yeah. She's very comfortable with male company. And she's not flirting with them, she's just very comfortable. And as soon as she sees Sam take an interest in Isabel, mm -hmm. she doesn't like it. Yeah. And she says, I don't mind it, I don't mind it, but she names Isabel, doesn't she? We and do have to say, though, going back to the Loton thing, I know Loton's out the house, but did any of you think Loton led her on at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. do? Yeah. You do? Yeah. They were in bed together having a snog, you know, one evening, and then he was very nice to her, but he still kept her on quite an arm's length. He wouldn't let her go. So do you when... think that she's now worried about what could happen with Sam? Yeah. 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 You're not? She would cling on to anything for the showman's, that's what it really? is. Really? She's yeah. fake, 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 fake. You oh. think she's fake? No. She's, she's totally desperate, and yeah. I think another new guy comes in and she's going to be straight on that as yeah. well. Really? Yeah. Philip, would you agree? What do you sound... Yeah, it's like, it's like one of them said before, I think she just wants a man yeah. at the end of the she's day. Limpet. She's an absolute... She's so? a, yeah, she's a limpet. She, she's very, very clingy. She doesn't... She compares herself to other girls and, you know, First of all, I thought maybe she was listening to the other housemates when they were warning her yeah. about Sam, but then it came up, Isabel, and it was jealousy. I mean, she should have been sprayed green, not... Oh! Green. Yeah. Is this the last thing we've seen of Sam and Ellie? Do we think? Do you think it is? I think it's over and done with now. Hello, Ellie. Hello. <laughs> the, this is the last of it because I think for Sam, he went in there and you can see what he did. He wanted a showman. He was knocked back, and I think that's the end of it. And I hopefully that's the end of it. I don't want to see any more of that. Do you know what? Anyone want to see him get it on? Luna. I think Sam might have something for one of the boys in the house because he he oh, he oh, did it. He didn't want to reveal the name of the person that he was interested no, in. No, no, that's another girl. I, I love the fact Luna has just gone, he fancies the boy! He fancies the boy! <laughs> Luna, he might, we don't know. But when he comes out, I will ask him on your behalf. <laughs> uh, on that note, we have run out of time. We're going to have to leave that there. Sorry for the abrupt ending. Uh, but give yourselves a round of applause, lovely. Nice little bit of Right, still to come, we've got all the latest news from the house and Andrew is still not happy with Joe's abrupt ways. Uh, but we've got some unseen footage of the housemates at their audition stages. Oh. And believe me, it was cringe. Little spoiler alert, they all got through to become housemates. See you after the break. <laughs> See you after. <laughs> Welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the Sign. And do you know what? Because it's the 4th of July, uh, really? The, the producers are actually just telling me we've got an extra special caller from across the pond. Can I just, can I just borrow that a minute? This phone should ring sort of any point now. <laughs> oh, look! Oh, OK. Sorry. Hello, Ryland speaking. Who's calling? The Donald. The Donald. Oh, hi, Ryan! Hi, hi Ryan. Hi! This is Ryland, actually. Very good to... Thank you, Ryan. No, no, it's Ryan. Nice to see you, Ryan. Uh, thank you. You're very important to me, as is Bart. Oh, thank you. I thought you'd be a bit busy running America to watch Bart. <laughs> no? I'm a big fan. Big fan of the show. Oh, thanks. Have you, have you got any favourites, Don? Chanel. Oh. You know, Trump by name, Trump by nature. Yeah. You know, I like that. Yeah. I would smell the Trumps. I would do that. Okay, that's I know weird. that's weird, but yeah. I would do that. Uh -huh. uh, Isabel. Yeah. Big fan of it. She is, she's fantastic. Yeah. Isn't she great? Yeah, I'm good. Isabel, you know we go to the same tanning salon. Do you? It's true. <laughs> I mean, now that I wear a tan. No, no, I don't wear tan either. I'd never do that. And uh, <laughs> Hannah. Oh, um, Hannah, yeah. I like Hannah. She was Miss Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. I voted for her. Did you? So she's got me to thank for that. Oh, that's <laughs> so uh, Deborah, I've heard she's yeah. got some piercings. Yes, she has. I, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. You know, I'd like to see more of that. Okay. You know, I've got a piercing too. 
I can't say where it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, that, might, that might be best. L listen, babe, I've got to get on with the show, and you obviously need to get on with your 4th of July celebrations, all right? But thanks, Riley. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you soon at the White House. Make sure you bring that microphone stick. I'm a big fan of that. Oh. All right, bye now. Uh, bye, Don. Happy 4th of July. Bye. <laughs> That wasn't Luke Kempner, by the way, all right? I'm just saying. Uh, but listen, just like Trump, sort of, uh, the housemates came from humble beginnings. You know, that's where we all started. That's my genius. Uh, and we caught it all on camera. Here is an exclusive look at some early, cringy audition footage. Have a look. I don't think before I speak. Do you know, like, a lot of people are born with a filter. Well, I think mine's still stuck up my mother because it didn't come out. When I get bored, if I'm bored, I'm going to do something to entertain me. I get agitated if I'm just doing nothing. It is warm, mind, isn't it? I'm always drier than a nun's arsehole. The guy I've just been dating, he's only 19. Cougar, but he's got a nine-inch dick. <laughs> I've been really lucky in business. I run a photo booth, and I've just gone and partnership on a nightclub. And he's got lots of money. Woo! I live a glamorous lifestyle. Being a Swansea VIP isn't what it fucking sounds, I'll tell you what. It's Swansea. Like, if I was in London, fair enough. Or if I was a VIP constantly in Marbella, fair enough. But Swansea, fuck it. Don't give me too much cred, like. I'm really good at turning people against each other without them knowing that I'm the one who's doing it. I have a very, like, friendly and cute face, and I use that to my advantage. Right, I love sex, right? And I've not had it at all. Like, last week, this time last week, I've not had sex. And then in the space of, like, a week, I did twice. My favorite thing in life is to crush the souls of the popular types. Do you know that emoji that you get, like, in a text message? His bit, that is literally the living thing. I saw it, and I literally went, oh, my God, it had its own postcode. I'm not even kidding. When I mean we went through the struggle in terms of people will have night trainers, we had deodorants. The hardest part of being a parent is letting go and letting them grow up. And I don't want to cry. Jesus Christ. But I know it's true though. Fucking grow so, up. So, <laughs> but in my language, you say Olori. Olori means queens. We are queens, so we are not going to step down to be a servant or peasant. Big of the girl. Like, uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, 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 uh. Honestly, it's a good job I ain't got any tonsils because it wouldn't have gone in. We argue all the fucking time. Um, I think our most recent argument was probably Friday. this morning. No, this morning. Oh, God, yeah, this morning. I'm coming, bitches! Wah! <laughs> Did anyone hear what Raph said? <laughs> Whoa! All right, well, we might be talking about that at some point, but now it's time for tomorrow's headlines and today's Bus Village News. <laughs> OK, top stories tonight. Andrew still thinks Joe is abrupt. <laughs> Hannah and Deborah enjoy a spot of bathroom balladry. And Chanel does her best to avoid working out. First up at 10.41, Andrew has a mid-morning rant about his arch-nemesis, darling boy, Joe. What do you think of the way Joe is handling the situation? I think he's handling things very childish. If you correct him, like, he's like, how dare you correct me? And then he gets defensive and kicks off. And it's not big, like, at all. It's just pathetic sometimes, like, to be so abrupt and nasty. It's just not nice. Really, really, really not nice. <laughs> You're so right, Andrew. I mean, to be fair, it's just not nice to be that abrupt! Uh, moving abruptly on, uh, after all the house drama at 12.04, Deborah and Hannah used the brilliant bathroom acoustics to spread a little peace and harmony. Hey, love, peace and harmony. Shower, we had a warm shower, 
It's such a dulcet tone. But as you saw, once again, it looked like Joe just couldn't give a... F you know what. Uh, finally, at 12.11, during the Survivor shopping task, Chanel faced her worst nightmare. Exercise. Are you OK? I don't do exercise. That's fine. Well, you, you as a personal trainer should today. know that you should edge me in gently. I'm edging you in gently. You're not edging me in gently. This is me edging you in gently. It's like saying you was going to do it soft and gentle and then you grab me my ear. Fuck me doggy style. It's <laughs> not OK. <laughs> Jesus. Keep pushing. I like Seven. the push, baby. Oh, feel the frost. Oh. OK, nine, good. I'll oh, feel the keep burn. Going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Four, Please three, stop. two, stop. I mean, you're doing, uh, you're doing Please. a good job. Please stop. Please. <laughs> Please there, okay? stop. All right, easy. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> it's a juicy bum bum. All right, you guys feeling all right? No? Yeah? Oh, sh oh shit. Oh, God, you better take easy. your top off now. Stop, stop coming off. Shit. <laughs> Jesus. You are a bit wet. Right. You need to take your top Back off. Back on your mat. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, it looked like the personal trainer faced his worst nightmare as well. Chanel. She done what we all probably would have done. And that was tonight's Box Village News. <laughs> all right, don't go anywhere, because after the break, our lovely Trisha, she's got some trust issues, don't we all, Chris? God bless her. Uh, plus, with the housemates fighting for survival, we take a look at who's got the skills to make it all the way to the bitter end. But first, there is an eviction to survive on Friday. Who goes? You go! You decide. This week, Charlotte, Joe and Tom all face the public vote. Who goes? You decide. From a landline call 090 20 44 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. From a mobile, call 6 50 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. For Charlotte, add 03. For Joe, add 08. For Tom, add 16. Calls to the long number will cost 50 pence plus your network access charge. Calls to the short number will cost 50 pence. Voting closes in Friday's eviction show. Votes cast after lines close won't count. If you're watching on Catch Up after that or outside the UK, please don't vote. You can find terms on the Big Brother website. <laughs> Big Brother's bit on the side. Now, listen, we pride ourselves on bringing you the only exclusives that matter. Am I right? Do you know what I mean? That's what we do. And I'm talking, like, the kind of gold that other spin-offs just can't afford. I mean, even the ones with two villas in Mallorca. Um, but this next one is... <laughs> oh... He went there. Um, this one is worth its weight in the shiny stuff. It's the box cam, ladies and gentlemen, yes. So, let's see what's going on. We've got housemates, we've got housemates. OK. Right, what is this rubbish on the floor in the living area? That is disgusting. If this isn't part of a task, I'm going to be fuming. The bunnies are still there going strong. The, there's no sanitary towels at the moment. There looks as if there's a balaclava on the fence. Um, just some housemates just doing riveting, riveting viewing. I think you'll agree. You just don't get this on the main show. You really don't. Um, forget about that. What day is it? Tuesday. It's not Tuesdays. It's Trisha Tuesday! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Trisha. Right, you want to talk about Trisha Trust today. Yes, yes. Uh, before we get started, I, that was the first time I've just seen it as well, that audition footage. What did you make of Raph then? Oh. Raph always said he was a super fan. He, he said he was going to play the game the whole time. He does on and off. Now, he, the other thing that he said is he likes to crush the popular people. Mm. That's when you can run away from the popular people. I think Raph has done a whole load of learning because he hasn't been able to run away from people. He's actually had to see things through and create relationships. So I think all of them have grown from that, except Ellie. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, let's think back, actually, very quickly. I don't want to spend too much time yeah. on Raph, but he did say stuff in his launch night VT as well. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah. And that's why Tom, when he was chosen as a people's housemate, yeah. sort of planted the seed. I think we need to keep a little eye on him. Oh, yes. I think we should yes, keep yes, a little yes. beady eye on yes. him. Um, let's talk about Joe, <clears throat> uh, all the drama that surrounded him tonight as well. He argued with Raph again. That fueled his anger. But the real nail in the coffin was Andrew standing up to him at the end of the show. So... <laughs> Trisha, why do you think he's got such a problem with Andrew now? Well, Andrew's taken him on, and Andrew is really doing what uh, Isabel did to Lowton. And uh, also because... And also because Andrew... Andrew is very articulate, he doesn't back down, and he's siding with Raph. Before, it was just Raph. Now, uh, as far as Joe can see, it's um, Mr and Mr, as he put it. Mr and Mr, yes. going for him now. Yes, Mr and Mr going for well, him. Well, let's have a little look at how Hurricane Sue, who we just <laughs> love on this show. This is how Sue summed up the situation. If I have a fact or I have something to say, I will say it, and I will say it and the most honest and nice ways I can. He's angry because he's up this week Not and he's angry because he's losing control of the house. I always stand for what's right. Yeah. I know what's right and I know what's fucking wrong. The little Scottish fiery tempered friend. I love it. <laughs> right, do you think, then, she's hit the nail on the head with what she's saying? Then? A lot of it. I don't think he ever was in control of the house. Um, don't I, you? No, I think he had this thing of fear and he still, you know, Tom and Kieran still trot around him very nicely. He sort of had this quiet ripple of fear of being the hard man. All of a sudden, here comes Andrew you know, so camp, but he's as camp as Butlins, standing up to him. Other holiday camps are available. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, standing up to him and uh, taking him on in front of everybody else. And he's embarrassed. Well, you say he's embarrassed. You wanted to talk about trust tonight. Mm -hmm. um, since the Second Chances event, some of the originals have become quite wary of him. I think it's quite safe to say we've said knowledge is power yes, and all of this. Yes. Who out of the originals do you think has got the most trust issues then? Out of the originals, oh, gosh, I think all... Oh, I'd, I'd have to say um, Joe is probably doesn't trust anybody, but then I don't think he ever really did. Uh, Ellie, Ellie is very, you know, very, very <clears throat> trusting, too trusting of Sam. Way too trusting of Sam. She's the chink, she's the chink in the armour as well. And it's interesting because, first of all, I thought she started to back off Sam because the others were warning her. Yeah. But it's only because he was following Isabel around. And, I mean, there she was with the streaks, you know, through the blue paint, crying <laughs> about a guy she's basically known for four days. Yeah. yeah. Really? Well, let's, let's, let's leave Ellie for a minute. Let's talk about Chanel, because we were reminded, if you remember, Chanel said she didn't want Sue to stay in her mm -hmm. bedroom in Thorn Cottage. Is Chanel right to be wary yes. of Hurricane Sue? Yes, she is. I, you know what I love about Chanel? She is... She goes on gut instinct, and she's got really good gut instinct. She can't often explain why she feels like she feels, but she's usually bang on... The, you know, she actually works people out really, really well, and that's what she shares in common with Raph. You think? Yes, I think the two of them work people, suss people out pretty quickly. Well, we know Raph's got his eye on them. We've seen that, especially in that yes, footage yes. as well. Do you think Chanel's worried? Now, you've all forgot about this, haven't you? That the second chances <laughs> might come forward and say she's the phantom egg dropper. Yes. I mean, they still don't know. Yes. Do you think that's a worry? No, it's a huge worry. Remember, the, all the newbies have had all of that time to sit and watch and they've heard the conversations people have had behind others' backs. So they have loads of knowledge, whereas the original housemates know virtually nothing about the newbies. So they've got an upper hand already. So do you think the originals can trust the second chances because they've got this knowledge? They shouldn't. They shouldn't. If they do, they No. If they do, they're stupid. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'll say it again. Give her a show back. For God's sake, someone listen. Precious here. Get rid of the rest and just have the best. Um, it's a night show. Simone said, and I think we all had a bit of a hmm about this, that Simone's got no interest in the £15,000 prize fund. Wait, let's have a reminder. If I want I'll give you fuck, I'll give you six grand to share between you all, I in and money in. No, Sorry, but I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't believe you. No. You'll take that What's money. What's 15 grand? You know the score with me. What's 15 grand? Sim, Sim, listen to me. Listen to me. Have you got a job? Um, come and go if I want so it. You if want, I want money, you want I can wages, get money like then. that. Do you go to work for wages or do you go to work for love? 
wages. No, I yeah, want that to, to answer that yeah, one. Yeah, to pay the bills. Right, so yeah. if you had 15 grand, paid. would that pay a good few amount no, of bills? No, I'm, I'm all right at home. Okay, My kids have got loads money. of money in a she trust fund. Money. Everything's all right. Yeah. Money's no object. Yeah, I'm not bothered. <laughs> now, the other housemates didn't seem to believe her. I think our audience are a little bit... Mm. Why hasn't she got the trust when she's saying something like that? Because it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Late night show, late night show, Patricia, please. Potty, potty now. Well, I was trying to think. I was trying to think of a nice way to say it, but really, you know, she's there for the love. She's in the house. She she auditioned for the love of it. Really. So I would like to see what would have happened if someone had popped out with a case full of 15,000 quid and said, do you want it? I would have liked to have seen her say, no, thank you, not today. <laughs> not today, dearie, not today. but God bless and all yes, the best. Yes, God's yes, peace, yes. Yes. Um, Let's talk about um, Ellie and Sam. She's obviously jumped straight into that romance, but we've seen her having second thoughts tonight after from a bit of advice, shall we say, from her friends. Let's have a look at this. If you allow people to know how to get to you, they know how to trigger you. Yeah. I will not sit by and watch someone take your shine away from you because I know how much it affects you. And that's because I respect you and you're one of my friends. I will not allow one of my friends to be mentally drained by things just because they know they can do that. Right, now, Ellie, from what we saw, seemed to be all over Sam. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite safe to say. Why is she choosing, then, do you think, to trust other opinions rather than her own mind? No, she, she just saw that Sam was chasing around after Isabel. That was the nail in his coffin. And actually, Kieran saying, I'm, I'm protecting you and what have you, he realises that if Ellie and Sam have this big showmance, then Sam's going to be in it right to the end, isn't he? he he's wormed his way in. That's the second worm comment we've worm, had tonight. Worm, snake, Nikki snakey. Chapman, we're loving the worm wormy, comments, wormy. girl. We've got another worm in tonight, <laughs> Nick. Wormy, wormy. Um, let's talk about Deborah and Hannah. Now, yeah. I, I, unsurprisingly, I think, because we all did fall in love with them a bit on launch night, they are the last pair remaining. Yes, they are the they last are. pair standing. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, they're sisters. Mm -hmm. Are they the only housemates in there that can trust each other I completely? I think so, yeah. And they... Yep, yeah, they can. And... They calm each other down, they have each other's backs 100%. Uh, I actually like... that. The only time, I have to say, I've liked their singing when it hasn't seemed to, to be aggro is when they you showed that little scene before when the they bar. were in the bathroom. Just that was done. That, that was joy. That, that was, was just joy. joy. And uh, then, of course, we panned to poor old Joe and he didn't seem to be quite as joyous as Sam. Uh, surely that would have cheered Joe up. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, finally, in your expert Trisha Goddard opinion... Oh, here we go. ..who is the least trustworthy housemate. Not who we who are we not a fan of, who's the least trustworthy? Um, no, hang on. I'm not going to say anybody because it, we don't know what's going to happen. People change in different at circumstances. At this moment in time, at, Trisha Goddard. At this moment, I tell you the one who's playing the blinder of the game very oh. slowly is, is Hurricane Sue, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really, why? Yeah. Because did you uh, did you notice when it was all kicking off? She just takes a seat, uh, a step back, and then she congratulates. Yeah, yeah. There's the you know my little uh, Scottish Spitfire. She comes in at the end. She doesn't actually get too overly involved. She's there to sort of mop up, you know, at the end. And that's where she has her two pennies. That's worth. where she has her two pennies worth, and she's remembered for the wise saying. She's the one whose clip you choose because. She has the sort of wrap-up of the whole situation. We better keep Very our clever. eye on that hurricane, let me tell you. Um, as ever, a massive thank you for sorting out my trust issues. I'll say it one more time. Give her a show. It's Trisha Goddard. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, if someone's not doing the job, oh. just start getting you another job. Oh, thank you. Well, come come yeah, September, yeah, yeah. she'll be everywhere. All uh, right, don't go anywhere because it is a jungle out there, literally, and only the strongest will survive. We're going to be discussing who's in it for the long game and who's not got their mad survival skills bruvs. Uh, but now, Charlotte, Joe and Tom are all facing their fiercest battle yet. Trisha, who goes? You decide. She got it right! Ah! She got it right! Yes, Trisha! Yes! This week, Charlotte, Joe and Tom all face the public vote. Who goes? You decide. From a landline, call 090 20 44 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. From a mobile, call 6 50 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. For Charlotte, add 03. 
For Joe, add 08. For Tom, add 16. Calls to the long number will cost 50 pence plus your network access charge. Calls to the short number will cost 50 pence. Voting closes in Friday's eviction show. Votes cast after lines close won't count. If you're watching on Catch Up After That or outside the UK, please don't vote. You can find terms on the Big Brother website. <laughs> Just catching up over old times. Uh, welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the side. And listen, I don't mean to be abrupt, uh, but we are running out of time. So I've got to get straight into this exclusive. Very abrupt. Very abrupt. Hey, Joe. Could we, like, shake hands on it and start a fresh day today? Raf? Yep. I'll shake your hand. Mm -hmm. If you've got a problem or you feel that I might be saying something or whatever, like you, I should have come up to you and said, Raf, mm -hmm. don't know why you're picking me out for this, why you're picking me out for that. I right. should have been a better man and come up to you, but I've let it eat at me because right. we've been in this house and maybe these new people have come in there. Yeah. But I'll forget about and it. And I shouldn't have bought in right, as well. Okay. All right, I'm glad you're all right. I don't want to talk about it anymore. No. Squashed. Listen, you know, it's hard in here, Raf. Yeah, I know, Joe. For everybody. For everyone, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I won't bring Ruff. it up again, Joe. Ruff. Forget <laughs> about it, mate. Yeah, it's a new I've day, done... yeah? Yeah, it's cool, yeah. You want right. a coffee? Um, no, I'm good, actually, I'm All good. Right. But thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Philip Olivier, what are we making of that one? Uh, it's nice that uh, Joe's apologised, but I don't think uh, Raph was taking any notice of it whatsoever. Do you not? No. Do you not? Nikki, do you think that's the end of the feud? It does seem a little too little too late in a way. Really? Yeah, I think he, you know, Joe has been so ruffled by it all, ruffled, ruffled, that he now <laughs> he now just thinks, oh my, I've got to make friends quickly because he knows what's gonna happen at the end of the week. You think? Mm. What about you, Trisha? Come on, you're the one in the know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's noticeable, of course, that Raph made the first move, and that's what people will remember. It wasn't Joe who made the first move. It was Raph saying, do you think we can put this behind us? Yeah. And uh, what could Joe do then? If he, if he started effing and blinding again, he would have come out as really, really, really the bad guy. So Raph played a blinder there. Yeah. You reckon? Yeah. Well, we're going to have to watch. We're going to have to watch. Uh, but the housemates are doing their best to survive this week's task because it's not about the basic ration life, is it? Let's be fair, we don't want that. So, there is a fly on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gone. Uh, but what about the long game? Who has got the survival skills to make it to the top of the Big Brother Mountain? It is time to give our panel and audience a bear grilling. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> yeah! 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 Okay, right. Battle mode. Bring it on now. <laughs> Got a bit like Joe. Yeah. Oh, listen, we saw tonight that the entire house was punished for the actions of a few of the housemates. No hot water, no appliances, and no fake tan! <laughs> Has Isabel gonna survive? <laughs> she, she was like, uh, I don't know, she was like someone who was cold turkey in the bathroom, wasn't she? I oh, there's a lot of What a worry! Do you think she's gonna be all right? If there's any fake tan left on that um, towel, which is on the floor, I think she'll be using that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've all been there, girls, and we, yeah. Uh, no. Some of the guys as well. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, let's talk about Isabel. Uh, after going through some rough terrain in the early stages of the comp, um, our very own Rusty Lee said she was amazing. Little flowers, really blossom. She even done the hands. Um, Trisha, do you agree? Is there I more do. to Isabel than the fake tan? Yes, yes, there is. And I think that little scene that we had with her and Raph in the bedroom showed that she's got a soft side as well. Mm. I really like Isabel. Sorry, yeah. I do. I really like her. You, know, you don't need to be sorry. Oh, I, I always have. Um, <laughs> she's real. Nikki, do you, do you think Isabel's in it for the long game, or do you think she's just happy to be there and see what happens? I think she's in it for the long game because mm. over the last few days she's slightly withdrawn, hasn't she? If ever there's an argument or anything going on, 
She doesn't actually walk away. She sits and she listens, but yeah. doesn't say anything. Even oh, with the Lowton situation, in all fairness, yeah, she made yeah. the comment and she stepped back yeah. and just let everyone else yeah. do it. There were a couple of little smirks as well. I yeah. <laughs> to get the positive feedback last night on the show because yeah. I think yeah. that's really give her a bit of confidence now. Yeah, yeah. I think she needed that as yeah. well, to be yes. perfectly honest. Yes. Well, let's not forget, though, she was something of a latecomer herself, but compared to the second chances, she's a bit of an old-timer. Um, they've got their own mountain to climb, the second timers. Um, they've got a £15,000 prize all at the top of that mountain. Philip, we've not really seen the competition heat up yet between the second chances, but can we see that unfold very soon, do you think? There's money on the line. There is, but the way they've come in, they, they've all come in with their own big characters and um, they haven't relied on each other when they've yeah. come in and used each other as kind of safety net. Um, but There's I not do... really much interaction between no. them, is there? They're coming on their own and yeah, they've just gone yeah, right straight true. into the mix. Yeah. They've gone straight into it, Trisha, but do you... I think on launch night, a lot of people said Sam... Not launch night, sorry, when the second chances went in, a lot of people said Sam, but now, after watching the show with them being in it, who do you think out of our second chances will be the last one standing? Sue. Yeah. Do you reckon? <laughs> Sue, Sue's very, very clever. I, 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 you know, you can almost see her mind working. She steps back at the right time. She steps in at the right time. She's mother hen to a lot of people, so she's going to be privy to a lot of secrets and what well, have will you. Will you say that? If, I mean, if anyone can survive a, a storm in there, it is Hurricane Sue. But... <laughs> <laughs> Chapman of Pop Stars fame, let me come to you. <laughs> you. Sue's obviously immune from the vote this week. Yeah. She has been getting involved, and like Trisha said in her chat, she waits for it all to unfold, then she goes in with yeah. her two pennies worth. She's like could, the oracle. But could she be putting herself on the chopping block for that? Well, I quite like her because she is the oracle. She explains to us what's just happened. Yes. She's there, she sees the argument, and then she gives you a summary. At I the know. End. <laughs> so, Marcus Bentley's going to be out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> the producers here must just love her because yeah. if you're ever not sure what's going on, just listen to her. The subtitle lady loves it. Yeah. She just says, What's Sue saying? I'll just write that. <laughs> It'll be all right. <laughs> um, let's talk about Big Brother's answer to Braveheart. Um, you can take our hot water, but you'll never take our freedom of speech. <laughs> right. Did I go a bit Australian? <laughs> uh, we are talking, of course, about Andrew. Um, Philip, is he the warrior that has just walked into that house that we have been waiting for to put the world to rights? Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, he's teamed up with Raph now, hasn't he? So mm. it's got, it, them two have kind of got the same motives. But I do like the way he's riled up Joe and he's really stood up. Yeah. Um, I hope he keeps it up and he really doesn't make any false moves because he's been a great character, a great new one. Well, Nikki, you've all just said Sue, but if Andrew carries on doing what he's doing, like you say, Sue doesn't go for people, she assesses and talks about it. Andrew, we saw, went for Joe and called him out. Yeah. Do you think he could be the last one standing? It's an interesting one. I, I don't find him to be an engaging character. He's no. likeable but he doesn't seem to rule the roost at all, and he just had his moment. I don't know whether he's going to continue that. He yeah. might now have the confidence. His but voice kind of drives you a little bit mad and after And he talks very quickly. <laughs> he does talk... He talks very quickly. You, because, Trisha, you said Sue. So. You don't think there's any chance he could be the last one standing at the second who, 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 the Andrew, Andrew could be? What's interesting is that he's latched on to Raph, but I, if you watch how Raph is towards Andrew, he sort of goes, yes, yes, OK, yes. But uh, Raph seems a little bit taken aback. It's like Andrew's almost like having a hairdryer being held in your face, you know, because <laughs> Raph sort of... No, Raph sort of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, like, appreciating it, but... It's like, oh my God, he's stealing my thunder a bit, you know. I so... love the fact Trisha speaks to a hairdryer. <laughs> I've always wondered what she does. She's in the dressing room next door. Here we are, in her having a good old nap. <laughs> Billy, what about Sam? Do you, do you think Sam's maybe taken his eyes off the prize because of the whole Ellie business, and he's just so focused into that? Um, yeah. Uh, before tonight's episode, I thought Sam and Ellie were a good match. And then, no, but when you see then the, the, then the vids where he's saying it was about someone's a kiss, I was like, oh, God, wow, he doesn't really like it. And he, he has just come in for a show, man. Yeah. Um, and poor Ellie, man, she's got feelings for him, so I really hope she doesn't go down that road and get hurt. Well, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with Ellie and Sam, but very quickly, what are we making of Simone? Are we liking her as a second no, chance? No, I don't like I've her. Been to yeah. I think she's just... In her launch side, she said, oh, I'm going to go and be big and bold, but now she's just, like, latched onto everyone, going... Jump to group to Who group. likes her? No. Who likes her? 
course you're all the way up here. <laughs> I do like her. She's just gone in there. She's been herself. She's. I know the whole 15 grand thing was wrong, and I think she just said that to try and get a rise, but she's going under the radar, and I can see her going further, cos she's not in everyone's faces trying to win. You don't she's think so? You don't think no? She needs the 15 grand for a new wardrobe. Oh! Slagging off people's clothes. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Uh, that is it. That is all I've got time for tonight. A massive thank you to my brilliant panel and our fantastic audience. Um, I'm going to be back tomorrow night just after 11 with Annie and Fanny, aka the two Julies from Bad Girls. I'm going Stephen Bailey, Bradley from S Club 7, and Letitia Grace. Until then, keep it real. She's counting me down. It's a bit abrupt. Night night.